This week on BeautiesTalkingBusiness.com, Andrea and I talk about pricing. Why raise your prices in October instead of January? When to raise your prices and by how much? With your host today, Andrea Pettingill at Shine With Drea and Jenny Hansen at Jenny A. Hansen. That's where you can find us on social. Let's dive Hello, in. Hello, you are watching or listening to this week's episode of BeautiesTalkingBusiness.com with your host, Jenny A. Hansen and... Andrea Pettingill. <laughs> and we are here to talk to you today about pricing and raising your prices. And this is a huge monster of a problem in the beauty industry and with nail technicians because I feel like so many nail technicians and beauty industry professionals underprice their services because we're in the service industry and we want to just serve and make everyone feel beautiful and help but we I feel like run into these hurdles and blocks when it comes to pricing because it's maybe uncomfortable and it's, you know, it's difficult and things like that. So we actually have some really good pricing tips to give you today. Yes. I'm super excited about these because I'm already starting to implement them in my business. And I know it is really hard, um, especially, I don't know if it's the same for you, Jenny, but we are, we're independent. So we have our own, you know, we're completely in charge of our own business. You know, we're not working or another salon or another um, person. So um, a lot of times when it's like that, you're really busy and you like, you just, you come to work and you work and you don't have time to do like the market research of like studying the demographic and studying your competition and other people in your area, all that kind of things, which can help you to really um, pinpoint, you know, where you're at with your prices and compare and like kind of do all that research. So that can be really difficult. You know, we're, we're doing the best we can to just like do our jobs and take care right. of our customer. We really, if we got to give something up, we're going to give up, you know, all the details, stuff like that so that we can focus on providing the best service. So it's take, it's a really good time to be talking about this right now so that um, we can like really give time to that topic of, you know, making sure your prices are right where they should be. Yes. And, and that's so true too, because I also feel like that that is, you know, something that like you were saying to really research your demographic and, and what the prices are around your area, but you can't just like pull these numbers like out of your head. So either you have to follow um, maybe some classes that you've been to or educators that are offering advice on where your pricing should be. And one thing that when we interviewed Holly, I'll put like a link up here where we did that interview from CND um, educator, Holly, the fingernail fixer, or I think it's just fingernail fixer, but she gave us some really good advice on this. And that's why we wanted to dedicate an entire show to this because she said to really look around at what is in your area and see what their prices are and then make sure that you are making a fair assessment of where your prices should be. And that's a good point too, that you mentioned how, you know, if you're working for another salon and you don't have control over that, um, I feel like that make sure you're in a good salon if they're in charge of all of your the pricing and things like that because there's some situations I remember kind of in my earlier days I was just happy to get a job anywhere. Sorry. I was just happy to get a job anywhere. And so I didn't really take this into consideration, but I had an owner who was constantly sending out coupons and discounts and doing all of these promotional deals, which does not necessarily work very well in the service industry. And when you are on commission, that can really 
hurt your paycheck. And I remember figuring out the numbers due to all of these discounted, you know, free manicure with a hair service or something like that. And then I am getting these checks that, you know, I'm like, I am working an hour at like $5 an hour. So really look into that, dive into that, know your numbers and also um, do check out lo locations and make sure it's a good salon that's not going to undercut your value. I think that's huge. But yes, if you are someone that's independent and can pick your own prices, then these are some good tips on how to do that. I just yes. want to <laughs> Uh, one thing that I'm really excited about is um, one of the tips from Holly is the timing because right now, like she was saying when, in that episode, if you watched before, um, right now, this time of year and right now, if you're, yeah, <laughs> go click on it. Um, if you're, um, you know, watching this not at the same time that it's been put out, it is about, it's the fall. So, you know, September, October, um, October starts to get really big into nail art for me, um, mm -hmm. for, uh, Halloween oh, and all that, yes. and then it gets so into the exciting. holidays. So it gets into parties, it gets into everyone wanting their nails done and, you know, being around all their friends and family. So um, really, really good time, you know, because that's going to be a time when everybody's like excited about doing an, uh, an add-on service that is a new technique or something. And then, um, you know, they're not going to stop doing their nails because this is when they're really excited about getting their nails done. So, yes. And then another really good tip on that is that whenever you, the, now the reason that you want to raise your prices in like October 1st is recommended is because of what Andrea is saying in the sense that people want the nail art and then the holidays are coming up and you know, the new fall trends, Thanksgiving, Christmas. And so that is when people are excited to have their nails done for parties. Sometimes you have some seasonal clients that just come around during the holidays. And why you want to raise your prices in October is because you think, okay, we should raise these in January, January 1st, because that's when you are, we're taught and it's, it's embedded in us. Getting the number, like, it, yeah. Yeah, but think about that. What, what's going on in January? You know, you just had Christmas, you just had New Year's, and so people don't have as much in the bank as they do October 1st. You know, even before they're buying Halloween costumes for their kids, there's still a little bit of extra money or themselves, you know, there's still a little bit of extra money there. And so her tip on raising your prices in October is really big and really important. And I think people also want to know, how much do I raise my prices on a yearly basis? And what do you do for that, Drea? What do I personally do? How do you do um, like a percentage or just a few dollars? Like how do you <laughs> I don't like numbers. That's why I went to beauty school. So I, <laughs> I don't even like it. If, like, a client service is like, on the five. Like if it's not on the zero or the five, like I'm like, forget about it. <laughs> oh, me too. That's such like an OCD nail tech thing. Um, yeah, I'm like, no, it's gotta be, it's gotta be like that. So I'll, I, I'll, um, yeah, I haven't raised them in a while. So then sometimes that way I can do the full $5 increase, you know. Yeah, and it's so not like it, and it even yeah. down, works. Right? And you, that would be good for you too because now another thing is that comes up is people say, I don't, so I would recommend the same thing, either add it in $5 or 5% is what I would recommend or 10% around there, you know, depending on what you're doing. But I also think it's really important that people are like, well, I just don't want to just change my prices. Well, of course you're not just going to just one day change your prices. You need to let your clientele know in advance. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know, tip number two, tip number one is raise your prices in October. I guess tip number two would be, you know, $5 or five to 10%. Tip number three is that you want to make sure that you let them know a month in advance that this change is going to be mm -hmm. happening. So you can either send them out um, an email if you're gathering their email addresses, which I hope you are, uh, it, or you can let them know by printing out a little note and putting it on your desk as saying, 
you know, in three, you know, or sorry, in 30 days or in three weeks, you know, or effective October 1st prices. And don't get caught up in it exactly having to be, um, it can just be their next appointment. Like if someone like, I was just That's like, true. Yeah. I mean like their next three week, like just so that they know that it's coming and then now it's here. Right. Like sometimes you get caught up in like, oh, I should have been telling them, oh, I'm just going to charge them what I always have, you know? And so it's like you warn them and then the next time they pay the new price. Yes. So um, keeping track of like who has and who hasn't been told, like you might need to make a note on your calendar book of when you yeah. started telling people. But um, yeah, I wanted to point out something else mm -hmm. to you. Oh, the, how you were saying percentage, how it's cost of living increase, you know? Yeah. There's so many factors as a nail tech we don't take into account. And that's one of them that is like happening all around us that we get to pay attention to mm -hmm. and, you know, participate in, in helping ourselves to have the business that we want. Absolutely. So, and have you, have you noticed that even when you go in to purchase a product, like a new nail polish or, you know, a new nail art thing, or when you go in to just purchase product that you're like, wait a minute, this is a little bit higher than it used to be. It's gone up a few cents. And yeah. it's because it, the products are doing the same thing. So cost of living is going up. Your product costs are going up and inflation, all of it, because as independent business owners in the beauty industry, there we have to cover our overhead costs, our booth rent, electricity, paper towels, laundry detergent, towel, you know, to bleach. Like there are so many things on top of orange wood sticks. Like you could go, I mean, I could make a whole like list of just inventory files. I mean, everything mm -hmm. that all these things that go up. And so you really need to value that and pay attention to it because if you aren't raising your prices, then you're slowly devaluing your income and diluting that down. And then one day you're going to wake up and you're going to feel exhausted and tired because you're not bringing in as much money when you're working harder, but you're bringing in yeah. and that can be a very defeating feeling. So just, honoring the value of what you're doing and raising those prices at a cost of living also gives you a sense of freedom. And it, for me, tell me, I don't know if you're the same way, but it, it almost reignites energy in me because then I know that the clients that are really loyal are going to stick around. The ones that maybe are out of budget won't stick around, which makes room for the, for the clients that can, that are in that budget, which brings in, you know, that clientele. And then it also reunites my energy in the sense that I don't feel like I'm undercutting myself because I am working hard and putting in this time and effort, but I feel like I'm getting paid well for it. And yeah. And so, yeah, it, it's not just that you want more money and that you're like a self, like that, you know, Oh, I just want money, money, money. It's right. not about that. It's that the value exchange has evened out, you know, yes. the effort that you're putting in is like that's this energy exchange with like what you're receiving in, in return. Mm -hmm. And so when that balanced out, when it's out of balance, we feel it like we feel, um, I had this experience with a, um, a client the other day and it, I mean, something, you know, we're just felt achy. Really, yeah. It's like, Oh, you know, I just, I realized how much effort I put into it. And then I didn't, um, charge as much as I would have someone else. And then I just, mm -hmm. I felt it and then I didn't get it. Mm -hmm. You know, so I was like, wow, like that, you know, and I know she felt it too. And so it's that awkward, you know, when they leave and then it's like, okay, what am I learning? Because next time I'm going to have to address that, you mm -hmm. know, and because we're always treating people how to treat us. And so stopping and paying attention is super important. <laughs> it's huge. That's good. And also I think that it's important to either like have your prices where your clients can see them or on your website, even if it's just like a little one page thing, because then that also prevents the awkward conversation of, you yeah. know, well, how much do you charge? What if I do this? And what if I do that? And then people are you just crickets and you're like, mm. so then it can kind of filter out that, too. <laughs> yeah. One of the things I think I'm going to start um, working on on mine is because I have so many options as far as nail art goes and things like that. So I'm 
putting base prices on all of my services and then putting all of the add-ons in a different category. And so as they, like I could even do it with a little note paper as they come down, I could write down, this is your base service. Here is a full set of nails. And then each time I pull something out, I can just, they can watch me do it, make a note, glitter, $5. And so the whole appointment, I'm adding, you know, five extra, five extra, five extra. And then they that. see exactly where their money's going, mm -hmm. you know, as I write it out. And it's like, well, oh, I, we could add this right now and I could charge you five extra. Or if you want to save more money, we can do it this different way. And so you're like helping them figure out what they can do today and what, you know, what works for them. And you're on their side. You're not just like, I'm going to charge you a ton of money. Right. And it's I love that. I'm going to it's start that you're working it out with them because each client is different. Like, right. you know, and I think for anyone listening, if you guys didn't catch that, it's just that she has a notebook where she's writing down every additional add on and have like, so that the client can see it and they're aware of it and they know exactly where it's going. That's huge. I'm going to start doing that because, and also too, when people ask how much things are, make sure you know your prices and you're sticking to them. And I am so guilty of this. Oh, and you are too. Okay. I have so, a comment on that. Because it's like, you're okay. I know I charge, you know, $10 for an add on for shellac or gel polish. Like that is my price an additional $10. But if it's somebody and I'm like, well, oh, it's, yeah, oh, yeah, but it's an additional $10. Then they're kind of like, if you're not confident with that, why am I going to pay it? But if you see it with the conviction that, like, it's no big deal, like, it's, you don't make it a big deal, they won't make it a big deal. So if yeah. you're like, okay, you know, a fill is $35 and with shellac, it's another $10. So that's a total of $45 if you'd like to do that. Would you like to do that today? So if you're saying that with confidence and conviction, then it's going to make both of you a lot more comfortable. Yeah. I have another story about that. Like yeah. how you said to know your prices because last time I raised my prices, I had been, I had so memorized the upside, up and down my old prices that when I had told this client before that she paid the new price and then she came back and just like came out of my mouth, the old price. I didn't even realize it until she was gone. I was like, oh. I just like, cause I forgot. And of course she didn't correct you. Like I just lost about $5 because I forgot. Mm -hmm. Like and she was already used to paying the other price, but she forgot too, probably, you know? So it's right? funny. It's, or she it's, did it and just didn't remind you. <laughs> or maybe. maybe. But, or just, she was so used to paying the same price too. Yeah. And I, you know what, Dre, you've brought up before of us maybe doing an actual webinar workshop where we share our screen and break it down and show people how we make our price menu mm -hmm. and where to set it and how we categorize and do things. So, I mean, are you still interested in doing that? Yeah. I'm just going to like live. I'm just going to call it out. Like we should do that. Yeah, so that, we'll, we'll come up with that in the future and then that'll hold us accountable to where we'll put together a work, like a webinar workshop. So if you're interested in that, put a comment if you want yes. that workshop and if we get enough comments or likes, then we'll do it because then we'll know that you guys want it. <laughs> but anyway, this is a really big topic and I think it's important that we huge. invite the webinar idea because um, everyone's situation is totally different. Yes. And so if we get a chance to help you by looking at what you are doing, um, what services are specific to what you want to have um, offered in your salon, like it's just so unique. So right. you can hop on the call with us, hop on the, the webinar. We can look at your prices. We can help kind of consult and go over them with you, you know, and, and help you figure it out with just fresh eyes too is huge. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll do that. I think that'll be fun. So if you want that, comment, like, let us know. And if we get enough people, we'll do it. <laughs> but I think, so hopefully those tips help. Do you have any other things to add to that? My only last thing that we didn't touch is yeah. know what's costing you. Like know what, how much, you yeah. know, you know how far, how many sets you're getting out of each product and things um, so that you know what, is leaving your pocket and you know um 
price accordingly. Right. You know, I, the nail tech, I don't know her name, but um, I follow on here. I think it's, she's in Canada or something. She has like a, a YouTube channel. She has like a box that she dumps all of her empties in. So when she uses up all of her protein bunch, she throws it in a box mm -hmm. and knows what, when she started putting things in there. So she knows about how long um, it took her during the month, like how many of these she went through. Like, right. Like she'll date in the month. She goes through all of her empties and she goes through and sees like, how many she goes through in one month. And so it's really good to know when, cause you'll know about how many clients you did that month and how far it gets you because some companies don't disclose that, um, per set, like I see and is pretty good at it. Yeah. But like companies don't give you a chart of like, this the will get you point, this many down. customer services out of, out of this model. Do you know what right. I mean? Like, and there's so many factors. Now to length and you know and we use it differently yeah and so it's unique to you and when you start a rhythm of a steady clientele doing the empties jar like to have like a a big box you put in the closet of every time you throw something away you, you throw it in there and then you throw it away at the end of the month once you look through it all mm -hmm. or just make a note of it if you don't want to hold on to the empty container yeah. <laughs> so that's kind of easy to just throw in empty container so you don't have to worry about it but um yeah like keep track so that keep you track. know um it's just knowledge is power you know <laughs> like yeah. come on. we need those easy tricks and hacks so that we can you know make it easy for us to do our jobs right absolutely a hundred percent and that's such good advice and i need to start doing that more too because yeah if you would be so surprised especially in our industry where the the margins can be so huge but if you're not pricing accordingly then you get to a point where you start adding every little thing up and you realize that you're not making as much as you think you are mm -hmm. and that hurts <laughs> yeah totally <laughs> <laughs> so yes well, that's well, another tip yeah. do your taxes and know your numbers like yeah. that is so important and even as a creative you, you it's not like you have to make a spreadsheet if you're not a spreadsheet person drea loves spreadsheets and she's very good at them i however am not like i'm always showing my notebooks of like just crazy scribbles like but this is what makes sense in my brain and yeah. i'll write it down and then i can hold that or put it in the back of my um, my, my book of like where I'm actually booking clients because I pencil in every one of my clients because something about writing helps me a lot more than having things digitally. And I just know that about my mind. I know that that's the way my brain works. And so I can keep notes in the back and I shouldn't, I'll, maybe I'll put a link to like some of my favorite notebooks because I, I'm obsessed with yeah. them. My calendar. Well, we all have a process. It's about finding out more options so that you can find out what's yours. Yes. You know? And what works, yeah, what works for so you and not you. going to, how am I supposed to do it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which is perfect. But we hope that this helps with your pricing and raising prices and making sure that you're doing them in an appropriate time. And hopefully you guys got some great value from this episode. So please leave a comment and a like. Let us know if you want to see that webinar where we actually walk you through how to make a pricing menu and also what's something else what's another good call to action we could add today oh i like that one of like letting us know letting us know what what's your biggest fear when it comes to raising your prices Ooh. you know what specifically is stopping you because um we're all about busting through fears you yes, know there's something deeper beneath the surface that's not in the light yet and so what is it and mm help us to know how we can help you guys. Yes, I love that. That is so good because then we can really dive into that. I love it. <laughs> well, thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. We are watching this community grow. We are watching our subscribers grow and it is amazing. And we just love that you guys are consuming this information and just, it, I don't know. It means the world to me. I know it means tons of joy too, that we are actually able to like make a difference and that you guys are getting good value out of these episodes. So again, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening until next week.
go to beautystalkingbusiness.com. Join our email list, join the Facebook community, and we will see you next time. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this week's episode on pricing. Please leave in the comments about your thoughts on wanting a webinar. And come find us, Andrea at Shine with Drea and Jenny at Jenny A. Hansen. Also, if you are not a part of our Facebook community, why? Come find us over at Beauty's Talking Business on Facebook and join our community over there. We would love to have you every week. We have an episode for you, the creative beauty business entrepreneur. Thanks so much for watching. Until next time, lots of love. Bye. My AC just turned on. Okay. <laughs>